Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for being here. My name is Andrew coming to you from the beautiful Carolinas. Today's topic is going to be what the narcissist uses to control people. Think about that for a minute. Everyone, if you like the content, please like, subscribe, and share. So when you were in the relationship with the narcissist, you were being controlled, you were being manipulated, you were being directed or steered in the direction that the narcissist wanted to push you in. And we did not know that people actually wanted to control what other people did, what they thought, what they said, the clothes they wore, the people they interacted with. But now we understand that this is what the narcissist does. They want control over virtually anything and everyone that they are associated with. And you were no different when you were in that relationship. Some of the ways the narcissist controls people, one would be, let's say, with the smartphone. Well, if you would be texting the narcissist, they would decide if they wanted to read your text. They would decide whether they wanted to reply to your text. They would decide whether they wanted to place you on hold. They would decide whether they did anything at all with that correspondence. Now, this is a game to the narcissist. You must bear this in mind. When you are texting somebody, now that you understand and you have the wisdom, texting is meant to be just very basic correspondence, a quick way to check in on somebody or to touch base or connect but that's not what the narcissist does. They use it to weaponize your emotions, to keep you trapped, to keep you stuck, to control you. Same thing with the phone call. When you would phone call the narcissist or give them a call, would they pick up immediately? Well, if they felt like it. If they didn't, they wouldn't. Sometimes they would just pick up the phone call and say, hey, busy, click. Or other times they would talk to you and misdirect your day. So example, let's say it's the middle of your work day and you were being very busy at work and you had to call the narcissist for something. Number one, you didn't know they were a narcissist and you knew nothing about the cycle. So you would be innocently calling them and asking them a question. Well, what would they do? They would probably give you a endless to-do list or hammer you for calling them or why did you disrupt their day or what's your problem? You know that they're so busy, etc. This is what the narcissist wants to do. They want to control you and your day and how you function at work. That is why each and every day you are, you are in the narcissistic relationship you were walking around on eggshells. You could not catch your breath. You did not know what was up or down. You were in the narcissistic fog. You were being devalued more and more. You were being controlled more and more. Now, those are two quick examples with the smartphone. Same thing, let's take the social media accounts of the narcissist. Well, first of all, do they have one social media account? They probably have dozens. Now, why would, the, why would a person have dozens of social media accounts? Because they wanna spy on former sources of supply or potential sources of supply and they wanna use filters and they wanna use all of the beautiful photography and the images of places that they have never even been to draw people in and to attract people into these relationships. That is what the narcissist does. That's why dating apps are cesspools for narcissism. Now again, if you're on a dating app, I get it. Maybe you had a pleasant experience, I can't tell you, but be very careful if you've never been on one and you're on one now because there are sharks swimming in those waters and it's not just a narcissist you may find. You may find actually more toxicity. But having said that, that's what the narcissist wants to do. They want to control what your thoughts are of them on social media. So example, let's say the narcissist is posting pictures. And again, you don't know they're a narcissist, but posting pictures of them being in Egypt and traveling all over in Rome and Spain and everywhere. And that looks like they're having their best life and they're living a high lifestyle and everything's going great. The truth of the matter is they're living downstairs in their par parents' basement and they're sitting on the couch playing Xbox, wearing a spaghetti stained t-shirt, eating Cheerios. That is what the narcissist may be doing. Now, all these things I'm mentioning to you, they want to control you. And they want to control you when they're with them, when you are with them. They want to control you when you are not with them. That's what the smartphone does many times. It's like a remote control, if you will, when you're in these narcissistic relationships. Remember, remote control is when you turn your TV on. Boom, you hit the remote control and you change the channels if you watch TV. Point being there is you can flip it. That's what the smartphone is. It's essentially a remote control how the narcissist can control you. Again, back then you didn't know what you were up against. You weren't taught this in school, so you didn't even think that somebody would be trying to control you. But now you know that the narcissist is not only everywhere, but they are shapeshifters. And they can change their appearance and they can change the mask they wear however they want to do it and whenever they want to do it because they need to be in control of what other people think about them. Think about this part for a minute. When the narcissist was with you, did they treat you properly? Were they kind, loving, respectful, and generous, and caring? Maybe a little bit here and there, but that was all fake, just like the mask that the narcissist wore. It was all fake, it was custom-made, tailor-made for you. 
Now, again, you did not know that back then, but you know it now. And you know now that the new supply is getting a new version of the narcissist. They, they have a custom-made mask just for them. And most likely, the new supply is either A, a recycled person who never healed, and they're probably still in the trauma bond. B, they're a toxic person themselves, i.e. a narcissist, perhaps. Or C, they're somebody like you, a kind, loving, stable, healthy person who does not know anything about narcissism. Remember, that was you in the beginning of that relationship. It is not you any longer. You are now headed towards the pinnacle of indifference, the mountaintop of indifference. You are now entering the third version of you. You are now becoming galvanized. You are now rising through the ashes like a phoenix and understanding that you are the priority. You come first, second, and third. And there's no room for toxicity in your life these days. There's no room for being controlled. If anybody's trying to control you these days, you just don't give them your attention. You slowly drown them out, meaning you remove yourself from that relationship and you vibrate higher and you surround yourself with people that are like-minded and people that have your best interest at heart. But the other ways the narcissist wants to control people, think about parental alienation. Maybe you had children with the narcissist or stepchildren. Well, the narcissist was driving a wedge between you and the children when you were raising them, I can assure you, because the narcissist is usually not the parent of the month, year, decade, or life. They usually don't even want anything to do with parenting. They want to disrupt the child's energy. Sorry to say that, but it's true. But having said that, co-parenting with the narcissist is a challenge in and of itself because every time you're trying to teach children morals or values or right from wrong, etc., the narcissist would not support you. And they would make their own rules up for the children and you would not have a say because the narcissist was driving the wedge between you and the children. They were controlling what the children listened to and they were controlling if your voice had any power in the family. And I can assure you, it probably didn't if you married the narcissist because the narcissist ruled that family with an iron fist probably, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> they were probably bullying not only you, but bullying the kids at times because the narcissist uses their children as sources of supply. Yes, the narcissist gets supply from anything, from a pet, from a child, from a romantic relationship, from a mom, dad, aunt, uncle, brother, sister, colleague, coworker, article of clothing, a car, a trip, money, you name it, that's what the narcissist gets supply. They can get supply from health. Example, let's pretend that they, or let's, let's say that the narcissist pretends they have an injury and they're telling people about that. Well, that's supply right there. They need attention, they need validation. Now keep this in mind, the narcissist at their core, they're shallow, they're hollow. There's nothing to them, there's no substance. They are frail. But what they do usually is they have the loudest voice in the room. And when they have the loudest voice in the room, people usually cower to them or listen to them or believe in the false narrative of the mask. That was you, it was certainly me. But we didn't have the wisdom back then. We didn't know what we were up against, now we do. And now we have insulated ourselves and protected ourselves, now we have boundaries. We can now say no, the strongest word in the English language. We now are not people pleasers. We don't just say yes. We don't put other people in front of ourselves at the drop of a hat just because somebody wants to get something from us. We now are the educated empath. We are awakened and aware, educated and empowered. And we are the priority. We do come first, second and third. And we are not controlling anybody because we never have. And we are not being controlled, which is a huge thing. Go back in time when you were in the relationship. Imagine all the sleepless nights that you had. Remember those sleepless nights. Remember the waiting for the narcissist to come home. Remember all the dinner plans that were blown up. Remember all the dinners you made and the narcissist would tell you, no, I'm staying late at work. Have dinner without me. I'll be back in a couple hours. Well, where were they really? One will never know. I can't tell you that. Neither can you because you weren't with the narcissist and one never knows where the narcissist is when they're not with you. But what we do know is during those dinners, when you were eating alone, night after night, week after week, the narcissist wasn't with you. They were controlling you again, having you ruin your dinner because they weren't in your presence. But then again, you didn't know that these were the games of the narcissist. You didn't know that they were doing that on purpose. You didn't know that potentially they were lining up the new supply while they were telling you that they were staying home, uh, staying at work later. But this is what they do. The narcissist slithers away to any direction that will benefit them. At the drop of a hat, they will change any relationship if it suits them and benefits them. It doesn't matter what, <clears throat> excuse me, it doesn't matter what you've done for the narcissist in the past. And it doesn't matter what you will do in the future. What matters to the narcissist is right here. What you're gonna do for them right now. That's why the narcissist lives for the moment. That's why you live in the present moment. And there is a huge difference between living for the moment and living in the present moment. When you're living for the moment, you don't care about anybody. You just do anything that you want to do without considering what it's gonna, how it's gonna affect other people. 
because you don't have any, you don't care about other people. So you just do whatever you want to do. And that's what the narcissist does. When you're living in the present moment, you slow your life down. The doors of abundance open up around you. You have your energy, your health, your finances, your network of friends, everything returns and you vibrate on such a higher vibrational state than you've ever vibrated before because you're in the third version of you. But when you do that, that's a beautiful thing. That's something the narcissist can't do. Keep in mind, the narcissist cannot sit still. They need to always be on the go. That's why they need three smartphones. That's why they have to go out in the middle of a thunderstorm to get a jar of peanut butter to make a, a peanut butter sandwich in a week. See, they need disruption. They need distractions. They need control. They need adventure. They need challenges. They need the new shiny object. They need, they need the new shiny thing. They need the next flavor of the month, etc. Now, I'm not saying any of these things lightly, and I'm, not, I'm certainly not trying to trigger you. I'm letting you know that one minute in a narcissistic relationship is one minute too long once you've identified that that person is a narcissist or toxic, whatever you want to call them. But all these things I'm sharing with you, it took you a long time to process things because most likely you were caught up in the trauma bond and you were believing that you were deeply in love with that person and perhaps you were, you probably were. But now you know that the narcissist can't fall in love with you or anybody and that is no different with the new supply. They can't fall in love with the new supply. What they're doing there is they're just going on to the next resource a person that they believed has more assets or resources than you did, or also maybe your health took a hit or your finances went to zero, etc. But once they get whatever they want from you, they don't want to be around you any longer. And remember this, the narcissist is like a petulant child. They want what they can't have, and when they get it, they don't want it. Play that again. That's what they do at their core. That's what they want. That's why the narcissist keeps on playing the cat and mouse games. They act like they're the cat, and when you don't know what's going on, you're the mouse and you're caught up in the relationship and you don't know how to get out. You don't know that you're existing in the narcissistic fog, but now you're getting the education. You're understanding that you really need to remove yourself from that relationship if you haven't already. You need to go no contact, block these people, delete them, remove all flying monkeys and people associated with them. If not now, when? If you can't, utilize gray rock, become dull and boring, but get away from these people because the narcissist wants to control people and the many ways they do it, how about intimacy? When you were with the narcissist many times, so let's say it was a romantic relationship, you wanted to be intimate at certain periods, well, would they do it, uh, be intimate with you? Maybe, sure. Then other times they would think to themselves, wait a minute, I could be intimate with them or not, but I need to get something from them first. So I'll play the game, I'll play hard to get, and I'll plant some seeds, and I'll get something from it, and then I'll exchange that for some intimacy. Yes, that's what happens so frequently. That's why the narcissist blames people. They say, oh, you didn't want to be intimate with me, etc." Well, it could be the exact opposite, or it could be that the narcissist didn't get what they wanted. And the narcissist blows everything up. Remember, they'll blow up intimacy, they'll blow up the relationships with your children, parental alienation, or they'll blow up relationships with your immediate uh, family members and support system. They'll blow up relationships at your office or your work or your job. This is what the narcissist wants to do. They want to disrupt people's energy and they don't care about anybody because they can't introspect. They won't be accountable, they won't apologize, and they won't say that they're wrong. This is how the narcissist goes on so easily to new sources of supply because this is the narcissistic relationship. What this is, is it's a relationship that you need to heal from. You need to slow your life down and process things, journal, meditate, see a therapist, watch videos, read. You need to really wrap your head around what narcissism is and how it affected you for a period of time. And you need to be grateful that you're out of that relationship and you need to really be in the cocoon of boundaries and process all of the things you went through. You need to learn the definitions in the glossary on the narcissistic abusive cycle. Example, you need to learn what gaslighting is, what the silent treatment is, what triangulation is, what rage fit is, what blame shifting is, etc. You need to understand that the narcissist is broken at their core and they don't want to introspect and they won't be accountable and they don't care about anybody, only themselves. And they want to collect people's money collect people's time. They want to collect broken hearts. They want to collect blown up relationships. This is what they do each and every day. This is what they're doing right now. So as I'm creating this video and you're consuming it, maybe you're waking up, having your morning coffee. Maybe you're getting ready to go to bed and you're just getting ready to turn the lights out. Think about this one for a minute. As I'm creating this video and you're consuming it, there are thousands, probably tens of thousands of people entering a narcissistic relationship for the first time, but that's not you. There are also thousands, probably tens of thousands of people being discarded right now or executing their exit plan from the narcissistic relationship. Again, that's not you. You've already done those things. You're healing, you're slowing your life down. You are really practicing gratitude. You're understanding that that relationship almost took you down for the count, but it didn't. And you're here 
and you are really committed to healing and you do understand that the healing path is not linear, it will take time. It will take a lot of time, but in your time you will heal. You will reach the pinnacle of indifference, the mountaintop of indifference where you no longer care about the narcissist or any people from that period of time. You will also process that there are casualties of the relationship and some will be financial, other will be children that you probably will not be able to see, other will be friends or family members that have drunk, uh, consumed the, the secret sauce from the narcissist, i.e. the smear campaign, so you're not gonna be able to communicate with those people any longer, and that you're gonna have to slow your life down and insulate yourself with loved and trusted ones that are like-minded. This is what we do, this is how we heal. And the narcissist has nothing to heal from for a few reasons, one, because they never cared about the relationship. They only cared about the opportunities that it provided for them. And two, they don't believe they ever did anything wrong. So there's nothing for them to heal from. Bear in mind also, when the relationship ended, the narcissist did not give you closure. It's impossible, they can't, they won't, they don't want to and they never will. Because closure would mean that the narcissist would have to admit what they did. They would have to be upfront and honest and genuine and authentic and say, yes, I actually did manipulate you. I did try to really do damage to you and I apologize, I was wrong, what was I thinking? Never gonna happen in a thousand years. What the narcissist wants to do is leave that door open, just a crack, and they hope that you do not go no contact and you do not block them, etc., so that they can come back at a later date and attempt to hoover you. And what is a hoover? It's when the narcissist is trying to draw you back into the relationship, maybe for a minute, maybe for a day, maybe for a week, a month, a year, a decade, the rest of your life, but do not, and I repeat, do not accept a hoover. It will not serve you. It's never served one person in the history of humankind that has accepted a Hoover. A Hoover, if you did accept one, it is, it is sending a succinct message to the narcissist that you have not healed, that you will go back for another round of punishment, and that yes, you haven't broken the trauma bond, or all three of those things. But what the, the Hoover does is it keeps you stuck. And I can assure you one thing, if you did accept a Hoover and you went back, the second or third or fifth round would be worse than the round before, because that's what the narcissist does. They want to manipulate people. They want to control people. They want to blame people for their misgivings and for their faults. They need the walking apology. They need the punching bag. They need the unpaid helper. They need the sounding board. They need someone to catapult them to the next level of their life. And I can assure you that was you for a period of time, which was the length of your relationship. And that's what they believe that the new supply is doing for them right now. And that's probably what the new supply is doing for them. But understand, the new supply is not living a life of puppies and rainbows and unicorns and butterflies. They are getting abused just like you were, probably worse, because the narcissist is always wearing a mask. They're always manipulating unsuspecting people or people who haven't healed or people that are believing in the false narrative of the mask. And this is how they go on from person to person, relationship to relationship, blowing up each and every relationship in their path and leaving a wake of destruction. So what does the, how the narcissist controls people? It's through parental alienation. It's through weaponizing intimacy, it's through financial abuse, that's another one. Think about that. Did the nar If the narcissist you were in a relationship with, um, if they had a good amount of money, they could turn the water, the, the spigot of money on or off. That's control. They would control if you received money, they would control if you didn't receive money. They could control if you went to college, if you didn't go to college, they could control if you bought a house or if you didn't. This It's all about control with the narcissist. You need to understand this. And that is why I share before I close the video that one minute in a relationship with a narcissist is one minute too long once you recognize that that's what it is. So everyone, that's the video. I hope you liked it. I loved doing it from the beautiful, and I mean beautiful Carolinas. This is Andrew. Namaste. Have a great afternoon, evening, or morning, no matter where you are on the planet. You are not alone. Remember that. You are not alone. God bless you all. I love you, and I will talk to you tomorrow. Enjoy your day, everybody. Be kind to each other. Continue on the healing path moving forward each and every day. And remember, I love you and I believe in you more than you know. Sending you a big virtual heart and a virtual hug. I love you all. God bless you. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.